Hey, welcome back guys, JC here. In the last video, I showed you how to wire in a Bluetooth module into your multi-rotor and uh, set up what you need to in Betaflight or CleanFlight or iNav. If you look in the description below, I will have links to a few different websites where you can purchase the same Bluetooth module that I am using just to make things easier for you as far as finding it. Now I want to talk about um, my favorite app to use with the Bluetooth module. I do apologize for making a video this way. I nor normally use screen recorders on my computer, but I don't have a phone screen recorder. Uh, now I am using a Android phone. I don't know if this works for iPhones or not. Someone would have to try it out and let me know. But on Android, you will go to the Play Store and search for Easy GUI Ground Station and then install it. It is free, but there are additional features that you do have to pay extra for, and it's $5. Uh, I'll show you what I'm talking about once we get there. So now that it's installing, it should pop up on my main screen in just a second. And there it is. So let's go into there. Now you want to, uh, well, click allow and allow. You need power going to your Bluetooth module. With my fly controller, I just have to plug in a USB, but not all fly controllers have that ability, so you guys might have to plug in a LiPo battery. So we see I'm getting power to the Bluetooth. So for connection, choose Bluetooth, uh, select Bluetooth device. Uh, I've already paired the Bluetooth module to my phone, so I can't show you how this goes, but you would just click scan for devices and it will pop up with something that might say fly controller link. And then it's gonna ask you for a password. The password is one, two, three, four. And that's if you were using the same module that, uh, that I'm using. Like I said, just uh, look in the links in the description. So once we have that selected and you've entered the password, uh, and by the way, you might have to, there's a button, a small button right here. You might have to hold that button in and then apply power to it. Uh, it's, it's just going to, tr just try both. All right, so let's click next. Firmware, if you are using CleanFlight, Betaflight, or iNav, then select this. I'm using iNav, so let's click next. Uh, I like meters, but I also like miles per hour. I'm sure a lot of you guys in the States do too. This thing right here means every 20 seconds your phone is at, it's a woman's voice and it's going to uh, basically tell you like your statistics and stuff. I think it's kind of annoying, so I just turn it off and you do that by pressing zero. I do leave the other sounds on, like uh, say your low voltage alarm. The thing about this is uh, Bluetooth modules, the range really sucks. You're only going to get about 20 feet, so I don't actually use this as I'm flying. I only use this to uh, basically keep me from having to bring a laptop with me into the field. Uh, you can do everything from this app that you can do on a laptop using Betaflight or iNav. Uh, choose your radio mode and all that and then click next 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 click OK now we can connect Connecting. I'm not sure if you can hear the woman's Connected. voice Angle is on. all right let me plug in a LiPo battery real quick That phone off the hook sound, I'm not sure if that's for no signal or low voltage. I want to say it's no signal. So now I'm going to turn my transmitter on. Okay. We see my battery voltage. Uh, I'm getting satellites to my GPS module. Uh, if we click information, this is just going to show you what version of firmware you were using, the version number, and a bunch of other statistics. You can even flash firmware from your phone. Dashboard 1 is just going to be like a layout of your uh, GPS stuff. So if I move my multi rotor around, it also shows your uh, battery, altitude, satellites, all that good stuff. Dashboard 2 is basically the same thing, just a different layout. So we see my flight mode, battery voltage, I can move this around. My number of satellites, uh, my speed in miles per hour. 
uh, GPS coordinates. Now Dashboard 3, that's the extra features that I was telling you about that you have to pay the $5 for. But it's totally worth it in my opinion. And it's not just this, it's a few other features that you get. So now you guys can see where I live. It's off a little bit because my GPS module, like I'm indoors right now, so I don't have that many satellites, so it's going to be off by a little bit. Then if you click a radio, I do have my transmitter turned on. If I move my gimbals around, you see them moving on the screen. You also get your channels. I can flip switches and test those out here. Checklist is, uh, this doesn't actually do anything. This is just a personal checklist for you to help you remember that, that you've done everything before you take off. Uh, this is mostly going to be for like GPS builds. If you have a, you know, something made for racing or freestyling, you don't necessarily need this. Uh, but these are just reminders and you can just check these boxes to remind yourself that you've done everything. Then you can swipe over. You can uh, check enable control, understand the risk, and test your motors out. So this is really good for diagnosing problems while you're in the field without a laptop. GPS info. See the satellites, coordinates, speed, everything. You can also show your uh, Android GPS data and compare the two to uh, give you a good idea of you know how far off you know your accuracy is. Then we got graphs. Here you can test out the sensors on your flight controller and GPS module. Once again, good for diagnosing problems in the field. Then we got map. This is going to show you all of the uh, airport or other places in your location. So it's, it's also going to include helipads and anything like that. You can click on these and it tells you exactly what it is. Mission Planner. Uh, this is a new feature since the last time I used this app, but one thing I do want to try is follow. I've been reading up Ground on it. Control station navigation. Apparently, good location precision. apparently you can get your multi rotor to follow you. Station navigation is disabled. And I'm really interested in trying that one out. Here you can actually uh, change your PIDs and rates. Once again, just like on a laptop, you got your modes. You can flip your switches and see them actually moving in real time. Uh, and it's not just for seeing your switches. You like you can adjust these and create switches. Then we got configuration. You can make all of your setting changes here. another page of configuration changes ports you can set up your you know GPS and receiver all that calibration you can calibrate all of your sensors CLI and I, I think this is awesome because I use the CLI all the time I know on-screen displays have come around to where you can change your PIDs and rates through the TX menu on on-screen displays, but I have yet to see an on-screen display where you can actually go into the CLI and do everything you need to do there. So that is, that is a win in my book. It only did that because, you know, just like on a computer, once you exit the CLI, it restarts or reboots your flight controller. So it just rebooted once we exited the CLI. Then you got logging for like your black box logger, stuff like that. And that's pretty much it. Uh, now, the other thing to this is there's an, an additional app called the EZGYLC, and this kind of ties in with the logger. I have yet to use this because this is also a new feature since the last time I used this app, but I do plan on checking it out. Uh, I just can't tell you much about it right now because I haven't tried it yet. Um, and this one is an additional $2 or something like that, $2.50, I think. 
So between the two of these, you're, you're going to spend between $7, $7.50. Totally worth it in my opinion. I love it. I hate taking my laptop with me into the field. And this app lets me do everything I need to do except for my cell phone. So thanks for watching, guys. Uh, look in the description below if you, if you need to know how to add your GPS module into your multi-rotor. I'll leave the link to that video as well as the links to where you can buy one of these modules. Thanks for watching, and I will see you again soon.